Hello friends. So here once again I welcome you to my channel. So today we are going to start one new chapter through this video. So our next chapter is your basic processing unit. Till now through our videos we have seen how processor is means what is an instruction then uh, there are different formats of instructions are there and whenever I am writing an instruction to specify my operand we can use various addressing modes and all right. Then next we will see how that CPU, CPU means the basic processing unit, my central processing unit or rather I should say the basic processing unit, how it performs those particular instructions, means how it is going to execute those instructions. Right now we know to solve a problem we can write a set of or a sequence of instructions and by executing those sequence of instructions we can solve a problem. So while um, executing an instruction what is the role of basic processing unit or how it executes those uh, instruction that we will see because whenever we are executing an instruction we are going to perform some small small operations from somewhere from one location to another location will transfer some content then will perform something then again will transfer something like that we are going to do so whatever we are going to do at what time what, what we need to do that will be controlled or monitored or, or coordinated by our basic processing unit that is CPU. Inside your CPU there are three components. One is your registers, one is your control unit, one is your ALU. Already you know about registers. Some registers are your dedicated, some are your general purpose. General purpose are the ones those the programmers or the assembly language programmers can use as your operand while writing instructions but dedicated ones have their reserve uses and accordingly we use them, right? Depending on their whatever uses are there. Then next part is control unit. So control unit is the one that will coordinate or more um, coordinate or what is that? Um, monitor or it will, um, it will coordinate the activities while performing a particular instruction, while executing an instruction. So at what time from which register value will go and at what time the value will enter into another register then at what time we will perform the operation when our results will be ready all these things are monitored and coordinated by your control unit. So the basic aim of this chapter is to design your control unit. So we will see the design of control unit but before that while executing an instruction what are the control signals required that part we are going to discuss first. First we will see that and then we will design our control unit so that those signals can be generated in the required sequence. So uh, in this video we are going to start with that particular concept. So next is I will revise some fundamental concepts. Whenever we are solving a problem for that we write a set of instructions and then processor fetches one instruction at a time and perform the operation specified. We know we are following von Neumann concept. Our instructions are there in the memory. From memory we need to get the instruction into the processor. That is called as fetching. Fetch means bring, read the instruction one at a time, right? One instruction will be brought from the memory into the processor and then we will find out the meaning of that instruction and based on whatever it is asking us to do, we'll perform the operation. What operation we need to do, whether some data movement or some ALU operation, whatever is specified in the opcode that we used to do. Then second part is instructions are fetched from successive memory locations. This is my default sequence, right? So see, whenever I'm executing one program, first I suppose at, at location I, some instruction is there. That will fetch, will decode, will execute. After that, by default, next instruction in sequence will be fast, will be decoded, will be executed. So this is how we move, I, I plus one, I plus two, and so on. This is our default uh, sequencing. This we will keep on doing, until what? Until a branch or a jump instruction or a call instruction. Call instruction also alters our value of PC from that sequential one, right? So when we execute a branch or a jump or a call instruction is encountered, that time the situation will be different. Otherwise else, from successive memory locations, we uh, keep on bringing or fetching instructions from memory into the processor and we keep on doing this instructions. And 
see who helps us to uh, keep track of the address of the locations for instruction we know for that we have one dedicated register who is that process uh, that program counter so program counter keeps track of the memory location or the address of your instructions that we need to execute next that we know this is also a dedicated register this we remember because these things we have done in the very beginning of this course then the next is see pc will be having the address of the instruction that we are going to execute next and who will hold the instruction that is currently being executed that is also a one special purpose register that register name is instruction register so instruction register job is to hold the instruction that is currently being performed currently being executed so what i have revised is that one instruction at a time will be brought from the memory to the processor and whatever is asked to do we will do after that and this is one then second point is instructions are placed one after the another in memory until and unless you execute some branch or jump branch means conditional jumping jump means un unconditional jumping or your call instruction function call procedure call subroutine call so that time only you are going to change the sequence and pc is the one register that helps us to know the address of the instruction that we need to uh, fetch next from the memory and ir is the register that holds the instruction that is currently being executed so this part is done then next is see while we are executing an instruction we know we are following some protocol what is that protocol first we need to fetch the contents of the memory location pointed by the pc why by the pc because just now i told pc is the one who can tell us what is the address of the next instruction to be executed and we are interested in the instruction and instruction is pointed by what pc so content of pc is a address at that address you will get your instruction that you need to load into ir this part when we will do this is called as fetch phase fetching fetching means what bringing or reading the instruction from the memory into your ir right this is done first this will do after that what we used to do after fetching the instruction second part is as you see when uh, second part will come as decoding but before that whenever we were uh, doing that fetching part somewhere we need to wait for the memory to give us the instruction and when we were waiting that time we have utilized our time to increment the pc to point to the next instruction in sequence right and see we know that uh, uh, here what is my assumption is that my memory is byte addressable that means in one location eight bits of data is kept and the length of each instruction is same and that happens to be one word and here my word length is your four bytes so due to that if one instruction is at location 1000 next instruction in sequence will be at address 1004 next will be at 1008 so whenever i am fetching the instruction pointed by this address that time we need to wait some time for the memory to give us the instruction during that time pc will be uh, incremented to point to the next instruction and here our assumption is that each instruction is of same length and all and the machine is byte addressable and the length of each instruction is taken as four bytes right so due to that the next location will be whatever is the current content plus 4 this plus 4 we have taken due to our assumption we have assumed right this is done so in in the ir we'll get the instruction that we need to execute next and whenever we are doing that uh, in a parallel uh, means whenever this is going on during that time only pc will be incremented to point to the next instruction in sequence and then what we will do carry out the actions specified by the instruction in the ir that means after bringing the instruction in ir we will decode it and after decoding we will get to know what to do next and whatever we need to do next that part we will do in the execution phase right so this is how one instruction is executed so once again i'll repeat see pc will be holding the address of the instruction to be executed so that address at that address whatever content is there that is nothing but an instruction that will be brought into ir during the fetching of an instruction and whenever we are fetching that time some uh, we need to wait for memory to give us the instruction because compared to processor memory is slower 
so memory will take some time so during that time we will utilize our time to increment the pc why for already i have explained and once this instruction reaches ir that means this part is also done because it is done in in between right so the, when the instruction is in ir we will decode it and we will carry out the actions that we need to do as part of execution phase so hope this part is clear then uh, so here i will just discuss up to here only that uh, why this is plus 4 and then wh what to do during your one instruction execution so do remember whenever we are executing an instruction first part is fetching the instruction along with that incrementing the pc then decode and then you bring the operands wherever they are and then execute the instruction so this much is there in this video then in the next video we will see one very interesting topic that is single bus cpu organization till then thank you